So, without any further ado, our first speaker, which will be Sherry Derhanian, will talk to you a little bit about preparedness before and after everything from earthquakes to nuclear attack. Sherry. Sorry, the computer went to sleep. It was taking a little break there. How do you follow that act? I can't quote like Michael Benedetto. However, I do know a little something about some earthquakes. Uh, we're just getting the computer up. Hold on just a second. Can we move the whiteboard? What do you need? The whiteboard. Yeah, move the whiteboard. Again, I apologize for the delay, we just had a technical difficulty. So, my background is that I worked 32 years for a major insurance company. Uh, during the 94 earthquake, I was a first responder. Um, I'll just tell you the name of the company, it was AAA. And they actually put me in a parking lot at Kestrin Van Owen at their Van Nuys branch office. And if you walked up with an auto club card and said, I have homeowner's insurance, they, we would write you a $1,500 check to get you into a hotel or whatever you needed, because that was just the th what they did back then. But um, now they have computers and they would actually check if you actually had the insurance, and I don't work there any longer. But um, at this point, it gave me a lot of experience on what to do um, in the aftermath of an earthquake, and we've come a long way in those days. So let's get started. Um, this is regarding disaster survival. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt her. Keep that thought though. Okay? I'm sorry. She'll be right back. In the meantime, Councilman Mitch Englander. So I wanted to come by and first of all thank you to the neighborhood councils for not just putting this together, uh, but for everything you do each and every day. They are volunteers. A lot of people don't realize that our neighborhood councils are volunteers uh, and they get together not just on the regular meetings, but they have the subcommittees and all their various committees to make sure that they have their eyes and ears on the ground of what's happening block by block in this community. So if we can give them a big round of applause and uh, thank them for their service. Uh, for those of the, you that don't know, I am uh, your council member, Mitchell Englander, and I'm honored to be so, born and raised out here uh, in the valley. More importantly, uh, or as importantly, I guess, I'm also, besides being a council member, I'm a reserve Los Angeles police officer. So for about a decade, I worked patrol out of Devonshire, uh, and now I work fugitives. So if I ever, uh, literally, at 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, bust your door down, uh, it's because you're wanted for something. Um, in any event, uh, beyond that, on the city council, I'm also 
besides being president pro tem of the council, I'm the chair of the public safety committee. And so what that means is my role citywide is everything having to do with police, fire, homeland security, counterterrorism, cybersecurity, and emergency preparedness. Something I, I take extremely seriously. And I do so uh, proudly, but we are here blessed in the Northwest Valley to be the epicenter of disaster. I mean, we, we really are. If it's going to happen, it's probably going to happen here. Uh, in fact, I was out in the parking lot just now while I was parking on the phone with Salito Reynolds, who's the general manager of the Department of Transportation, because we just saw uh, a news item on CBS that said we have one of the most dangerous intersections in the state of California right at uh, Reseda and Devonshire, for those of you that didn't see that. And we're trying to scratch our heads how, how and why. So who best to find out why that's a dangerous intersection and how do we fix it? So I called John, a lot of you know John, who runs the gas station. And I said, John, you're there every single day. What do you think it is? He said, oh, I know exactly what it is. The left turn pocket, the arrow turns quickly. It's only green for a minute. And then instead of turning red, it turns green again as a green light. And everybody is trying to run it. Not to mention we've got a lot more volume and a lot more distracted drivers. So it's an easy sort of re-engineering. We all have our engineers out there tomorrow. But you guys, the point of that is, you are the eyes and ears of this community. So if you see something, say something. If you have an idea, let us know. We act on it right away. So there's a lot going on here, and I'm not going to get into that, because this is about emergency preparedness and disaster preparedness. And when I say we're the epicenter of disaster, make no mistake. Um, a lot of things happen, they happen here. We've many here, who here has been evacuated because of a fire? Okay, a few of you. Who here remembers the Northridge earthquake? <laughs> Everyone. Um, how about the Chatsworth train collision that's gonna be 10 years coming this January? Uh, I was, it was one of the, it's the worst to, to date, still the worst um, train collision in US history where we lost 25 people. Uh, including Officer Spree from the Los Angeles Police Department. I was one of the first on the scene on that. And, um, and I was there all night. It was one of the worst things that I've ever had to deal with in my life, and recovery emotionally from what I saw. Uh, but I will tell you what I also saw were the neighbors that lived around there running towards danger, jumping on the trains while they were on fire to try to help people. Um, those who knew CPR and, CP, and first aid, uh, we're rendering aid and uh, putting themselves in harm's way. And so we've certainly seen our share of disasters. I don't even have to mention the gas blowout, but we've seen our share of disasters here, and you can never be prepared enough. How many people here in this room, and I want you to be honest on this, how many people in this room, and I know many of you, so I'll know if you're honest, actually have a pair of shoes next to their bed? That's fantastic. That's excellent. And it's usually a very, that's one of the most important things. Because what happens in an earthquake, a lot of people don't die in earthquakes. They die right, they, they get injured immediately after. Uh, they get injured immediately after because they jump out of bed if it happens in the middle of the night. And the first thing that happens to them is their feet get cut up. And now they're sort of useless to help anybody else. Now they themselves are victims and need help. And so it's sometimes and often it's the little things that you don't think about. Making sure, believe it or not, that you have a flashlight next to the bed that works. How many have flashlights next to the bed and you haven't turned them on in two years? <laughs> it happens all the time. You go to turn it on and it's dead. Um, it's the little things. Making sure that you have enough water. Um, who here knows that you can actually drink your pool water if it's treated correctly? Okay, then here's a tricky one for the ones whose hands went up. I'm going to call on you specifically and call you out. So, you can actually take a gallon of water from your pool and you can put drops of bleach in it to make it drinkable. How many drops of bleach per gallon do you put in? Six, two, four, three. <laughs> It's about 16. Oh. 
It's about anywhere between a dozen and 16. You wait five minutes, and then you smell the water. Let me ask you another question. Once you smell the water, if you don't smell any bleach then, after five minutes, is it safe to drink? Yes. Yes? Yes. yes. No. The answer is no. It's not safe. That means it's still dirty. You gotta put another couple of drops. If you smell just a little bit of bleach, you're good to go after another five minutes. It, it's completely counterintuitive to what you would think. That's why there's emergency preparedness books at the back that you should all leave with and make sure you take them with you. There's a lot of tips and tricks that a lot of people just don't know. How many of you have your neighbor's phone numbers? Fantastic. Did you know the first thing that's probably going to go out is your cell service? You're going to get a busy signal. But did you also know there's a good chance you can dial out of state and not local? So does everybody in your family have a contact out of state that you can call? Because you're going to try to call each other and you won't get through. But there's a good chance you can call out of state. And a lot of people don't realize that. So all of these tricks and tips are in the back. Um, I just wanted to come by and, and tell you how important this is and that you're here. This is a phenomenal turnout. I truly appreciate y'all doing this. Um, we do have, has anybody heard of uh, CERT, our CERT program? Anybody here CERT certified? Okay, so I'm sure you're gonna talk a little bit about that. I see our CERT team. The Los Angeles Fire Department has a free, free training program, which is very unique to this country. And it was actually started here in the city of Los Angeles um, by our fire department. And by, in fact, a, re a firefighter who recently retired um, started it. And it's become a national model. And you can actually go through a training program on how to use a fire extinguisher, how to administer first aid, how to triage, how to tie a tourniquet, all the little things that, believe it or not, you may need one day. And it's really good to know. Uh, my entire office, I make my entire staff get CERT certified, and we've challenged the other offices to do that. And so I thank our fire department. By the way, the best fire department by far, bar none in the country. And so, and they deserve a huge round of applause. Our CERT teams deserve a huge round of applause. So thank you very much. So with that, we also have in the back, um, and I'll close with this, uh, we developed a little called Aftershock brochure. What do you do after an earthquake? Um, I literally want you to take one of those brochures and not read it. I want you to take one of those brochures. Oh, look at that. Thank you, Vanna White. I, I want you to take one of these <laughs> brochures and put it in your closet next to your front door. Pull it out if there's an emergency. One of the things we did on this, and hopefully it's self-explanatory, but this tears off, and you put it on your door or window, if you are, and if you need, that's it. And it tells all your neighbors and first responders right there as they're driving by. Um, we've given out about 50,000 of these so far. And um, in fact, there's a quick story I'll tell you. This is really cool. It's a mobile home park in Chatsworth, and they all have them. And they came up with their own unique program with these. And what they did is every morning a group of the women would walk door to door just to check on their neighbors because they're all elderly to make sure they're okay and they answer the door. But they got really tired of walking up the steps and walking back down the steps every day. So they all got together and said, let's do this. In the morning, by eight o'clock in the morning, you have to put your okay sign up in the window. By five o'clock in the afternoon, it has to come down, because they do two walks. They do one in the morning and one at night. If the okay sign is up past five o'clock, we know you're probably not okay. Yep. And they developed their own little program. 